let's go to god's word this morning shall we turn our bibles to uh, luke's gospel in chapter number 1 and we read verses 5 to 25 luke's gospel chapter 1 and we read verses 5 to 25 in the time of herod king of judea there was a priest named zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of abijah his wife elizabeth was also a descendant of aaron both of them were upright in the sight of god observing all the lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly but when they had no ch- but they had no children because elizabeth was barren and they were both well along in years once when zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before god He was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the for the burning of incense came all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him he was startled and was gripped with fear but the angel said to him do not be afraid Zechariah your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Many of the people of Israel will he bring back to the Lord their God and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the lord zechariah asked the angel how can i be sure of this i am an old man and my wife is well along in years the angel answered i am gabriel i stand in the presence of god and i have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news and now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words which will come true at their proper time meanwhile the people were waiting for zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple when he came out he could not speak to them they realized he had seen a vision in the temple for he kept making signs to them but remained unable to speak when this time of service was completed he returned home after this his elizabeth his wife elizabeth became pregnant and for 5 months remained in seclusion the lord has done this for me she said in these days he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people in verse 25 elizabeth says this the lord has done this for me she said in these days he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace A God is a God who does things for us. Hallelujah. As we began this service we heard the Lord is our helper. Truly he helps us. He does things where Elizabeth says in her old age after she had born a child she says the Lord has done this for me. In these days he has shown his favor. and taken away my disgrace hallelujah you know the predicament that she was in was really really bad you know she had something that god had planned for her she was someone who was no ordinary person not just like somebody who is married somebody who has a baby somebody who gives birth and has children just not like any other mother but here she is going to be giving birth to the forerunner of the savior himself the one who is going to be born through her is a special child has a special calling a purpose upon his life there is some greatness deposited within her and there is something that god has planned for her future which she is going to bring forth and she herself and the child that is going to be born to her at old age is going to affirm and confirm the plan that god has for mary the mother of jesus mary is going to give birth in a very unusual way because the holy spirit is going to come upon her 
and the power of the most high will overshadow her and she will give birth to the savior jesus even before she is going to be married while she was still betrothed to joseph and before they came together in the union of marriage mary conceives and she gives birth and mary is also startled at this appearance of the angel who comes to announce about the birth of her first born child who is going to be born in a supernatural way and this at this while mary wonders and she asks this question same question like what zechariah asked how will this be i am a virgin the angel answered the holy spirit will come on you and then she goes on to and the angel goes on to say in verse 36 of chapter 1 even elizabeth your relative is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month for nothing is impossible with god one of the reasons why god planned the timing of the birth of john the baptist who is going to be born at the very old at a very old age for zechariah and elizabeth was to be a sign to serve as a sign for mary because here is mary wondering how is this going to be i'm a virgin and there in a supernatural way at very old age zechariah and elizabeth are giving birth and that serves as a sign that affirms to mary and gives her the faith to believe that nothing is impossible with god hallelujah sometimes your crisis is just going to serve as an affirmation as an encouragement to build somebody else's faith <laughs> hallelujah oh how much did mary uh, did elizabeth and zechariah suffer oh they would have suffered a great deal of ordeal all through those years maybe at times zechariah got wild at may uh, at elizabeth or elizabeth got so frustrated with zechariah and said what is this happening we are not able to bear a child maybe they were very very depressed maybe they were very sad all through their lives maybe they felt there's nobody who's going to carry our name there's no generations to come for us maybe they felt you know their life was just empty it was barren yes of course they served the lord faithfully you know sometimes that's where it, you find the irony <laughs> it tells about zechariah and elizabeth in verse number 5 and 6 that both of them were upright in the sight of god observing all the lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly have you wondered if god is there with us and if we are really truly serving the lord why all this is happening to us why is all of this crisis why is all of these need all of these needs why are all of these problems that we are facing and it sometimes pushes us drives us to a place where we are questioning our faith itself where we are so uh, weak within ourselves and we wonder uh, what is going wrong why is why are all of these things going wrong in my life and i believe that if you have been called out for some greatness and if there is something good that is planned out for you you are Uh, bound to face challenges and this is not just an isolated incident of um zechariah and elizabeth but you find that uh, as a very common scenario in the lives of many many of the patriarchs look at the life of abraham and isaac and jacob look at each of their lives all of them had major situations look at the life of life of joseph look at the life of all of these patriarchs all of these great men whom god used powerfully and wherever there was a great calling wherever there was a great anointing wherever there was a great plan that god had for their lives there was always great challenges big crises things that don't happen to others happen to them and sometimes we wonder why all of this is only happening to me this seemed to be very you know unusual i grew up as a good person i did good to everybody I lived a godly life and never intended evil to any one. I never um uh, you know did anything that would you know deserve me of such a situation that I am going through. Sometimes we wonder why. But I believe that when we are destined for greatness you are bound to face challenges and 
crisis and often for many reasons unknown to us at that point but as we go along in our lives and as we go through the waters as we walk through the fire and as we come on the other side we really discover what god has been doing and what god has been up to all the while and then we will be able to acknowledge at the end of the day god is good hallelujah praise the lord while you're going through this process you really don't understand what's happening and here this is an amazing plan that god has for this beautiful family but for a whole period of time they lived an empty barren life but the thing is that they regularly did things rightly it says there both of them were upright in the sight of the lord observing the lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly and they were serving zechariah was of the priestly family and he was serving in the temple as priest before god he was chosen by lot and he came and he was doing his you know service to the lord with even after being regular with the things of life being regular and faithful but some of we find that the usual things of life that happen in the right time as it happens to all other people don't happen to us there is an unreasonable un explainable unusual delay and uh, a hold up of things you're just like in a bottleneck situation you are caught between the devil and the deep sea you're not neither able to move forward you neither able to move backward you neither able to go up nor go down it looks like you are just stuck where you are good things don't seem to happen in proportion to the upright and the blameless life that we live sometimes we equate them i do all of these good things and so good things must happen to me but it doesn't happen to that proportion rich ancestry and great reputation of family lineage don't make things happen in life zechariah and elizabeth had it it says that zechariah was a priest who belonged to the priestly division of abijah his life his wife elizabeth was a descendant of aaron oh we come from the descendants of aaron but that don't guarantee or make everything in life happen well everything is not happening good to these people just because they come from a great ancestry or a good family lineage they were the anointed of the lord they were the priestly division but yet they were barren yes he was called zechariah was called yes he was anointed yes he was ordained as a priest serving between god and man serving the lord offering the sacrifices seeing the um you know the offerings burnt and the uh, fire coming and quenching them and the lord appearing and all of these things yes called anointed ordained yet struggling doesn't but the point is it doesn't steal away your greatness your calling your purpose what god has in store for you what god has ordained and preplanned for you it doesn't steal away even though you might be struggling yes is he's a man who since here in worship as according to the custom as according to the lot as he was it was his time to go and worship god as it was his time to go and do the service in the presence of the lord he's there on time he's doing his worship he's praying offering sacrifices to god he's serving the lord and he would have done it for generate for a whole generation he was old for a whole generation he was doing it all through his life but yet there was emptiness yet there was barrenness yet they were suffering disgrace he was doing a very honorable job but on the other side there is a disgrace a thorn in the flesh sometimes don't we wonder after all of the worship that we give to god all the prayers that we have offered all of the fasting we have done all of the sincere service that we have done to god but yet we are barren yet there is a something that brings disgrace into our life now the problem itself the problem of not having a child itself was not a big deal probably 
but what was a bigger problem was the disgrace it earns the attention it catches among people the discussions that happen around you know they not having a baby that's what people talk about when they get together at weddings that's what people talk about when they get together for a birthday party that's what people talk about when they speak to one another on the phone they're discussing you and you know they're discussing you sometimes you can overhear them probably sometimes it's your own family members who are discussing you you're spoken about over the phone and that's very disgraceful that's very painful that hurts that puts you down that makes you feel so um you know dejected because it's not just the fact that you don't have this blessing but the fact that you are being discussed that the fact that you are been you know been being the center of attraction you hate to go places you hate to see people you hate to gather be where people gather because everybody is having a different eye on you because you're suffering disgrace because of something that you lack in your life i don't know if anybody has been through such a situation i don't know if there's anybody who is going through such a situation this even this morning because of some reason that you suffer disgrace humiliation and pain because of something that's not there because of something that you lack because of some delay in your life because something's not happened as yet something which happens as usual to everybody does is not happening to you or something unusual has happened something that must not happen has happened and so even more than dealing with the need that you have even more than dealing with the crisis that you have dealing with the disgrace that the situation has earned that you have earned for your own life is a bigger and the greater devil that you have to face every day this is the plight of many good godly people a pride since you are honest worshiping praying faithful people and we wonder why we don't find answers god doesn't seem to take notice of the barrenness and the disgrace that we are suffering because of the needs of our lives it looks like god has just shut his eyes it looks like all the holiness is just a waste of effort who can understand this predicament and there is no sign of relief there's no ray of hope no no way to find help for ourselves and that is when i believe god steps in but we come to a place where we can't find anything we just simply do not know what to do and that's where jehoshaphat was when he said when he was facing these armies coming against him he said we do not know what to do but our eyes are fixed on you and that's where god steps in that's where we turn our eyes to god that's where we begin to fix our eyes on jesus and god steps in when we step out when we stop taking control he takes control when we take our hands off he puts his hands in hallelujah when we take our hands off he puts his hands in hallelujah when we step out he steps right there he steps in and when he steps in you know what can happen hallelujah as we sang that last song miracles happen hallelujah miracles begin to happen when we take our hands off and we say i'm not going to handle this let him handle it we turn it all over to him here's how you experience the grace of god like elizabeth did she escaped the disgrace of her life she didn't go into the grave with disgrace but the disgrace that came upon her life was removed because she spells it out saying in verse 25 the lord has done this for me 
when the lord does this for you you also will be able to say in these days he has shown his favor and has taken away my disgrace hallelujah to title this morning's message it is simply grace for disgrace <laughs> hallelujah it is grace for disgrace when the grace of god the favor of god reaches down to you and he touches your life your life is changed and transformed forever and that takes away all of the disgrace and it is gone in a moment hallelujah all the grace you suffered for a long time leaves when the favor of the lord comes upon you and he has appointed a certain time when he will show his favor hallelujah hallelujah but i find some key things that were in the life of zechariah and elizabeth that i believe that really opened the door for this disgrace to leave and for grace to enter hallelujah we pray this morning that grace will enter and disgrace will leave that grace will have its entry and disgrace will have its exit out of everyone's life and every home and every family hallelujah whatever has marred your name whatever has brought disgrace upon your life probably it was your own sin probably it was your own mistakes probably it was you going the wrong way and straying away that brought disgrace but god is able to take it away by his grace hallelujah you find number 1 there was a reward for faithfulness this family was faithful continue to be faithful even through the barrenness continue to be faithful even through the pain continue to faithfully seek the lord continue to worship the lord continue to pray continue to seek the lord even though nothing happens they continued to be faithful to the lord very often we 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 give up very quickly we become very very upset with god we get upset with prayer we get upset about you know our holiness and everything and we we wonder what is the use of doing all of this but god sends an angel with a good news to him because he was faithfully serving the lord in the temple in the temple the lord came and met him the angel of the lord comes and meets him hallelujah while he was in a time of prayer while he was there worshiping the lord and doing the service to the lord would you serve the lord even if nothing happens overnight would you continue to pray would you continue to seek the lord would you continue to worship him even though miracles don't happen even though there seem to be no ray of hope even though there seem to be you know no light in your life it may seem to be like it's all covered with darkness it might look like god has totally forgotten you abandoned you probably you may not feel good but even if you don't feel good would you continue to faithfully serve him and seek him when you do that there's certainly a reward we do not seek the lord and serve him so that he will reward us but while we faithfully seek and serve him he will certainly reward us there's a huge difference between the both we don't seek the lord so that he will reward us with good things but we faithfully seek him even if we don't find any answers even if we find no blessing coming our way we continue to faithfully walk with him and yet he will never forsake you you will never be forgotten he will come and he will bestow you with his blessing and he will remove the disgrace by his grace he did not turn away from god zechariah did not stop serving the lord this zechariah did not stop praying zechariah did not stop his ministry he did not turn away nor did he do all his service for the sake of a baby because he already knew the time is gone time is gone when you think time is gone and time is flying and all the time is over that's when suddenly a miracle comes hallelujah hallelujah it's beyond all of the time all these things should have happened long ago oh yes it didn't happen do you wonder why it's going to happen hallelujah because god has his appointed time 
he did not turn away from god nor did he do all of this service for the sake of receiving a reward it is one thing to do a work for god for the sake of a reward it's totally another thing to receive the reward for the good work that was done amen it's one thing to work for god for the sake of a reward but it's totally another thing to receive a reward for the good work that is done and that's what god wants to do in your life in verse 25 you find the lord has done this for me she was able to say the lord has done this for me hallelujah god gave her a reward god blessed zechariah and elizabeth because they continued to be faithful they continued to walk a blameless life before god they continued to serve the lord they continued to you know regularly follow god's commands they continually served him because of that they were rewarded quickly number 2 persistent prayer persistent prayer and persistent prayer brings god's favor will open the door for god's favor and grace persistent prayer he the, he was in the temple at the time of prayer at the time when the worshipers were praying at the time when when zechariah was offering this incense at the time when he was doing his work of priesthood and worshiping god and praying to god and zechariah had also continually had been praying persisting in prayer in verse 13 you see but the angel said to him do not be afraid zechariah your prayer has been heard your elizabeth your wife elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to give him the name john very very clear revelation comes very clear instruction very clear even the name was given it was not vague it was very clear but how did it come because this man was a man of prayer because he was persisting in prayer even though the miracle didn't happen even though it was gone past the time of childbearing even though it was impossible to have a child at this old age even though it was medically impossible but yet god made it possible because zechariah continued to persist in prayer persistence in prayer brings god's favor hallelujah continue to pray how often do you pray how much time do you pray how intentional you are in prayer how much do you rejoice to pray how much are you drawn to prayer very often we blame god we get upset with god without praying but if you would pray persistently continually every day all the time for every need of yours you are bound to experience a miracle hallelujah Amen the grace of God will come reaching out to you but without prayer it's not going to happen you have to do what you have to do and God will do what he will do Amen praise the lord we can't be going around and eating and sleeping and having fun and having good times and this and doing this and that and have no prayer and expect for any blessing from God Amen we need to be praying we need to be persistent in prayer he got an answer for his prayer if he had not prayed this probably would not have happened god might have chosen someone else an angel was sent for his request he prayed continually and the angel comes and says i have come here in answer to your prayer your prayer has been heard remember every word that you utter from your mouth in prayer is heard amen it does not go in vain is it is heard and the lord said you receive not because you ask not you receive not because you ask not instead of sitting and worrying instead of beating yourself down and being pitiful of yourself and your predicament and being worried and being a feeling ashamed of your uh, disgraceful situation and feeling upset about how other people look at you or think about you would you start praying in persistent prayer and then you see the change coming hallelujah hallelujah what we end up doing is just being pitiful of ourselves and you know and and just feeling the disgrace and just you know emotionally being you know disturbed and troubled and spending sleepless nights and all of these things without praying god wants us to persist in prayer prayer is a lifeline he did not give up on prayer God will test you if you truly seek him. 
God does not throw away blessings loosely. It is not that he's a hard task master, but he wants us to pray to him. He wants us to relate with him. When we find this favor after persisting in prayer, our experience of God in the whole process is priceless. Do you get what I'm saying? When we persist in prayer after going through all of this disgrace, as we persist in prayer and we find God doing a miracle in our lives, the experience of prayer that you've gone through all of this time is simply priceless. They have become very precious because you begin to love him more. Because you begin to depend on him more. Your love for him and your dependence on him just multiplies. Else we would just live like as if we don't care about God. But God wants us to be in a relationship with him. He wants us to love him because he loves us very much. And so sometimes he wants us to come and love him more and become totally dependent on him. He wants us to trust him. What is the foundation of a relationship? It is trust. It is love. Those are the core elements of any relationship. It is love and trust. And that's exactly what God wants from us. He wants us to love him. He wants us to trust him. And so sometimes he allows disgraceful situations to, for us to go through. You know, we, we, we go through all of this and in this whole process, God turns our lives around and he slowly, slowly, he's drawing us to himself. We are pushed to a corner where we find ourselves facing a wall and we have no other way to go. We have no other way to turn to. We have no other person to look up to. We have no other way to find help. And those are the moments we finally find ourselves abandoning our lives in the hands of God. Hallelujah. We find ourselves abandoning our lives in the hands of God. And where we, as we turn our lives over to him, we come into this closeness and this intimacy with him. I'm sure many of us can testify and say, but if not for all of the things that I've been through in my life, I probably would have never come this far in my relationship with God. Amen. Because I was forsaken, because I was forgotten. Because I was put down, because I lost, because I went through pain, because I went through hell. That's why I'm so much in love with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God loves us so much. He wants to draw us close to him. Our love for him and dependence on him just simply multiplies. And then comes the favor of God. Then the door of favor opens up. In verse 25, the Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor. There's an appointed time these days. I believe these days are the days of favor. Hallelujah. The quicker you are, the smarter you are <laughs> to love him and be totally dependent on him, the quicker you are to find grace in his eyes. His favor is going to last for a lifetime and beyond. In these days, he has shown us his favor. Quickly, number three. A, we got to persevere in faith. As I said, the foundation of any relationship is love and trust. We need to persevere in faith, not just persist in prayer, but also persevere in faith. Faith and prayer goes together again. We can't be praying truly without believing. And if you really believe, you will pray. <laughs> they go hand in hand. Persevere in faith without doubting. Trust is the foundation. Faith is the foundation and the core of this relationship that we have with God. And God wants us to believe in him. He does not want us to love him and act like we don't trust him. Amen. True relationship calls for intimacy and love and faith. Totally believing that he's there to take care of me. He's there to bless me. He's there to open the door for me. He will do everything for me. And so the evidence of your love for him is your faith. For God, your relationship is at the heart. Your relationship with him is at the heart of everything he does for you. For him, doing these great mighty miracles is no big deal at all. He's almighty. He's all powerful. He can do anything in a moment. He can speak a word and even somebody at the other side of the globe can get healed. He can speak a word. He can touch someone and they can be raised from the dead. And those things happen even today. But that's not difficult for God. 
but what he is after is a relationship with us and because he is after a relationship with us you know that is at the heart of all that he does for us very often we begin to focus on the needs of our life but he's focusing on the relationship are you with me you get to the bottom of it and you get to the relationship with god and you will see all the other things taken care of you don't have to be worrying you don't have to be breaking your head you don't have to be standing upside down and praying <laughs> you focus on your relationship with god and see just w- see what happens everything will begin to fall into place everything will begin to change even you if you go through needs even if you go through problems even if you go through situations that are difficult to handle he will solve them he will take care of them he will deal with them you focus on the relationship and the miracles will automatically follow amen you focus on your intimacy with him that's all that you need you need him more than his blessings when you have him the blessings are going to come focus on that let not your relationship be altered based on the blessings that's the way it happens most often that's when we get into unnecessary trouble our relationship with god becomes very dependent and subjective upon how we feel or how what kind of situations are happening in our life when good things happen we feel god is good and we feel some closeness with him and we want to thank him and we want to be grateful and sometimes when we have needs and we have unanswered prayers we begin to stray away we begin to feel that god is not bothering god is not concerned god is not loving we feel you know god has rejected us and we sometimes feel you know uh, we f- we don't feel like praying we don't feel like worshiping we don't feel like being thankful and what happens is that our relationship with god becomes very subjective to our circumstances but i want us to learn this morning that our relationship with god is at the heart of christian life and that is at the heart of everything and that's what he's focusing on and all of these blessings are just bound to follow as you continually pursue him amen praise the lord let's get our understanding well so that we will focus on the right things but what happens as zechariah and elizabeth continually faithfully served the lord and persisted in faith you know there was at this time when the announcement came an angel gabriel comes and tells him you know you're going to have a baby and this is what this child is going to be he's going to make a people ready for the lord and after a good revelation of all of this in verse 18 you find zechariah asked the angel how can i be sure of this i am an old man and my wife is well along in years you see a doubt even in that situation even though god is speaking there is still doubt but this is what god does not want us to have and the angel answered i am gabriel i stand in the presence of god and i have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news verse 20 and now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens because you do not believe my words which will come true at their proper time you see god is not happy about unbelief god is simply not happy about unbelief he tells he tells zechariah you know you want to know how this will this will happen you want a sign you know sometimes you think asking for a sign is great but be careful if you're asking a sign out of unbelief or out of faith i'm sure god sometimes graciously even in the midst of our unbelief gives us a sign but this sign was not a good sign this sign was making him dumb because the angel clearly said i'm not saying it the angel clearly said because you did not believe my words obviously he was unhappy about it when an angel himself comes and appears and when god is speaking face to face with zechariah zechariah is still with unbelief that's where you know we need to learn this lesson that we got to persevere in faith and sometimes the hindrances for our blessings might be our unbelief let's not be unbelieving 
about what God is able to do, about God's power and God's capacity to do things in our lives, about God's power and ability to change circumstances in our lives. Let's not be filled with unbelief, but let us learn to believe this morning that whatever it may be right now, it might look like nothing's going to happen. It might look like there is no ray of hope. It might look like, you know, nothing is coming through. Nothing is working out. But yet I believe that God is able to make all things possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I do not want my unbelief to stand in the way of what God wants to do. Amen. When God is about to do something, when God has purpose in his heart and comes to us with the good news and has good things in store for us, why should our unbelief stop it? Sometimes we are unbelieving and then we blame the devil. Sometimes the devil gets accused very unfairly by very powerful believers. <laughs> Sometimes believers come full of the Holy Spirit accusing the devil. But don't realize there's, always, there's already a devil sitting right inside. The devil of unbelief. Don't bash the devil. Get the unbelief out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to be persevering in faith and we need God's grace to believe. May God give us a new measure of faith this morning to believe for the impossible things. Hallelujah. Even for the impossible things, our unbelief can run us into trouble for a while. But the grace is that God continues to fulfill his plans in spite of Zechariah's unbelief. Hallelujah. Zechariah's unbelief and yet God fulfilling his plan and his purpose and blessing them with a baby is not a license for us to have unbelief. Don't say, oh, Zechariah has still got his baby in spite of his unbelief. <laughs> but that's a lesson for us to learn that we don't have this. Amen. But yet God was gracious to Zechariah and Elizabeth. Even though Zechariah did not believe, God still didn't stop his blessing. God doesn't turn us down even he knows that we are weak at times. He helps us in our weaknesses. He graciously gave Zechariah a sign by making him mute but did not stop the blessing because of his unbelief. The lesson is to persevere in faith with regard to the will of God and the, what the word of God says about our lives. It's, the lesson is to persevere in faith with regard to the will of God and what the word of God talks about our lives. Certainly by his grace, he takes away all disgrace from our lives by his grace. Grace enters and disgrace leaves. Hallelujah. May grace enter into your life, into your home, into your family, into the lives of your children, at your workplace, with your finances, in your health. May grace abound and increase more and more and let disgrace have its exit once and for all this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord that you will never again suffer disgrace. The Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 10, verse 15, verse 17 and 19. I read the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Hallelujah. Disgrace leaves and grace of God comes. May grace increase and abound wherever there is disgrace this morning. May God strengthen us and strengthen our faith. Continue to be faithful and your faithfulness will be rewarded. Persistent prayer because persistent prayer brings favor. Persevere in your faith and you will see God adding grace upon grace upon your life and you will see blessings multiply and overflow. Focus on your love and your relationship with the Lord. Focus in your love and your faith and your trust on the Lord and, and, and pursue, the, pursue that. Keep the first things first. The blessings and the miracles are just bound to simply follow. Hallelujah. Amen. May God help us and give us His grace this day.